Woo! Okay, kids. It has been a crazy, crazy morning. Uh, ran out of pectin, and uh, I don't know if they're going to make enough mason jars for all this. This is just this morning, 16, and there are berries in here. Berries here. Berries here. Each one of these containers yields about nine 12 ounce jars. So I've got my work cut out for me. Anyway, this video is going to be especially for Randall and I'm going to take a trip out the back door and talk a little bit about what he's going through. He's actually quite overwhelmed right now. New to gardening and he was not uh, aware and prepared for how nuts it gets between trying to seed collect, maintain the garden, and um, harvest. So he planted some watermelons that uh, are taking over the garden space. And the wonderful thing about melons, cucumbers, vining plants is that uh, until they're little, I think these are called tendrils, um, grasp onto things, uh, you have quite a bit of leeway of putting it where you want it. And you can see I'm getting watermelon blossoms all over the place, so that's really great to see. And the, uh, the pollinators are just nuts in the morning. Uh, the one day there were a couple out there, then the next day I went out there and they were just crazy everywhere. Anyway, back to the watermelon. That's, uh, you know, I gave in one of my videos, uh, the size of this area and everybody is like, oh, you know, and I called it a bed and other people are like, oh, that's a pretty good size garden space. And I'm like, no, it's a bed, uh, because of the plants that I chose to put here. This watermelon will actually, uh, pretty much could take over this whole entire thing easily, right? So I'm going to direct those vines up onto that fence line. So trellising is an option for cantaloupes and watermelons, cucumbers as well. I've never heard of anybody um, pruning watermelons, but I, I do know that people prune uh, cucumber vines. I don't do it, I just let them, I let them take over. Bean plants. Uh, I know I've spoken about this, that if you pick them young, and pick them often that they are just mad insane producers. So it takes a pressure canner to can beans. And here's lots of lots of babies happening and I started picking and I'm gonna have to pick even more. So here's your deal. Either you can them, eat them fresh like crazy, give them away to friends and family, or you are going to blanch them now, people, uh, if you're not familiar with the, the uh, food storage process, some things cannot go directly into the freezer. Either they have to be chilled and put into the freezer or blanched and put into the freezer. And a lot of the greens are like this and beans are like this. And what, it's a really simple process. You are going to plunge your beans into uh, near boiling water two to three minutes, you're gonna pull them out and plunge them into an ice bath. Then you package them. You know, if you wanna put them on a sheet and freeze them and then package them or stick them into little Ziploc bags and package them, that's great. I highly recommend that you do little individual portions and don't just jam a whole bunch of your beans into a big gallon Ziploc bag. And then when they go into the freezer, then you don't have the ability to just take out what you want without thawing out the entire thing. As you can see, I need to get some water on these guys ASAP. Uh, typical, it's very typical, that even if you watered your garden thoroughly, that during the day, you're going to experience the droop on the bigger leaves. Don't, you know, if you know that they were watered thoroughly, don't be too alarmed by this. Uh, 
these bigger leaves are losing more moisture than the roots could uptake. But as soon as the sun fades a little bit, they're going to recoup just fine. And uh, so the lemon apple cucumbers have started to produce flower. My little bows are all over the place. And uh, I don't know if you could get all, see all that action with the pollinators. Same thing, cucumber vines, totally out of control. You need immense amount of space if you're not going to trellis them, but just move them, direct them to grow where you want them to grow. If you have a fence line or, or you know, have the funds for trellis, it's an option. What else? Oh, Randall was curious about okra. Uh, while I'm here at the cucumber vines and squash vines, common early yellow, straight neck, prolific squash. Most people will grow the zucchini squash. These squash have to go way, way, way beyond what you would normally pick to eat. And then you take that, that fruit and you set it on your counter for two, three weeks before seed collection. We've got nice growth on these, uh, on these Hopi squash, there's another one over there. I don't know if you're going to be able to get that, but the Hopi squash are popping up in a lot of places. Uh, new little babies. Droop, droop, droop. I'll be getting that. Uh, I'm going to get off this soon and, and get these guys some relief. Okay, there are varieties that are pickling variety cucumbers. You can't just grow any old cucumber and expect to produce a good pickle from it. So that's one of the other things that you have to look out for. I have personally not done cucumbers since I was a child in my mother's kitchen. And so I don't have a good recipe. And, and as far as I was concerned, hers were never quite as good as store-bought. Uh, the classic kosher dill with a lot of spice to them. Bull knows doing well. Why we are here. Okra. Okra gets very big. Tall. Um, you pick it young and you pick it often unless you're just doing seed production. I'm pretty sure that it, it will take a blanching process and uh, can be pressure canned. But I have never done this because I'm producing for fresh and for seed. So, um, you know, they just get a couple inches long. Oh, we got like ants visiting here and lots of them. I wonder what that's all about. That's the first time I've ever seen that. Not just as long as they don't do too much damage. But these plants are going to get enormous. The, all, all three of the varieties of okra that I've grown before were gigantic. Huh. All right. So there you have it. Leafy greens need to be blanched. Beans before freezing. You can also uh, blanch squash and um, freeze it, pressure can it. Now, one of my elderly girlfriends tells me that uh, back in the day before um, her mom would do the pressure canning, in order to get around doing that, uh, the tomatoes would be coming in and she would take a small portion of the other vegetables that she had produced the corn, beans, and uh, okra, that kind of thing, and mix a small amount of it in with predominantly tomato sauce. And that way this was uh, the acid in the tomatoes would counteract, you know, what was happening in the other vegetables. Uh, and, and, and they wouldn't go rancid, and it was used as a soup and a stock, and even for rice, she said. So, there you have it. Um, as, as we get deeper, you know, into my garden harvest, I'm gonna try to slow myself down to show you how I preserve, you know, everything that I'm doing here. You know, I'm doing these berries, but I move so fast and furious as I'm canning, um, it would just be unbelievably cumbersome to try to work a, a camera into the into the mix. Maybe one day I'll have one of the children um, film it 
and you could see both of my hands flying around very quickly. Anyway, I, uh, <laughs> I wish you luck with trying to juggle everything that it takes to, uh, to do the gardening, keep up your home life, you know, being happy and all of that, and uh, still manage to get the seed collection in. It adds, it definitely adds an, a different element to it that, um, that you have to keep up with and, and constantly monitor. Sometimes I'm, you know, even in the daytime coming out, checking on things a couple times a day to make sure I'm, I'm hitting it at optimal times. All right, best of luck, love, health and happiness. Arrivederci.